I remember thinking to myself, if I'm the sum of the five people I hang out with the most, they're not fucking living next door to me in a town with 50,000 people. I'd be more happy with giving away $5 million worth of courses to people in need than fucking spending money to go on the bottom line. I don't like people telling me what to do, uh, and I sort of need to be in control. What's the one event that's happened in your life that you have linked to, I guess, you know, shaping or contributed to your success? A uh, hardship. Um, two things, and I spoke about this before. Well, a hardship is definitely part, I'll get to that soon, but the first thing was I had to move. You know, um, what is it? You are the sum of the five people you hang out with the most, right? You know, I, knew, I learned that so early on in life. Um, and what I realized is that when I turned about 20, 19 or 20, um, I remember thinking to myself, well, if it's if I'm the sum of the five people I hang out with the most, they're not fucking living next door to me in a town with 50,000 people. So once I figured that out, I, it took me three years to get on a plane and move to a country for, that had 2.5 million people in it to a country that had 25 million people in it. So that was the difference, right? Uh, and then it was a journey of finding those right people. So um, because, you know, you you have to surround yourself with people who know more than you. Uh, otherwise you can't learn anything. Unless you're a big learner and you're going to uni, you're reading books and doing all that stuff. Which is cool, but um, if you don't have any um, balance on how you execute against that, like so experience from other people, because you don't hang around with those people, you, you'll fail at a higher rate. So um, I always think, you know, you've got to move friends in and out of your, of your sort of um, bandwidth, right? Really, really fast. Or slow, it just depends, right? Like, um, because if you're hanging out with dumb people all the time, uh, it's just really too hard to get anything done. And I don't mean that, you know, it's cool that you have friends from school and university and all that sort of stuff. I think that's cool. I think you can keep that. So what I'm saying is it's, you could lower your exposure to those people and increase your and exposure in another place. I, I think that's absolutely critical. That's what I did. I know people who have done that. Successful people say that all the time. And I think you become the sum of the five people you hang with the most. I truly believe that, 100%, without, without a doubt. Don't hang out with idiots. <laughs> if you had four <laughs> minutes of Elon Musk's time, what would you ask or what would you want to discuss? Why did you smoke a joint with Joe Rogan live on air? Like that probably wasn't good for the shareholders. Uh, that would be the first thing. Uh, I'm joking. No, that's cool. I think I love that he does that. Um, yeah, shit, that's a good question. Actually, no one's ever asked me that before. What would be four questions I would ask him? Um, I'd wanna get his take on what's gonna happen in the next 10 years in terms of probably three things. Um, sustainability for humanity would be one of them. And I know he talks about that, but I'd ask him in a different way. Uh, I'd like to talk to him. I don't wanna talk to him about AI, man. I know what he thinks about AI. Um, so he's got XAI now, right? So he's, uh, and you know, the whole history with, with open AI, I get all that. But I, would, uh, I wouldn't ask him about AI, I would ask him about um, what he's got in the pipelines in terms of design, development, and robotics. I think he's pretty big on robotics, so I wanna know about that. Um, I'd, I'd wanna know that if he was, if he was running the entire world, I'd wanna know what his policies would be. So, you know, always think, what if he was president of the United States, right? Look at the candidates we have in America. The presidential candidates are just a joke. They're just, it's, they're embarrassing to a point, right? Like, but if we had someone like him, I wonder what he would do. Like, he speaks about glo global economics in terms of equality, which I think is super, a super interesting concept that everybody should be earning the same. You know what I mean? And it shouldn't be governed by your education or your family. Like rich families occupying the majority of wealth in America. He thinks that that's probably not the right way to disperse currencies through a human economy. And I, I find that super fucking interesting. And he's spoken about it a little bit, but he hasn't really delved into it. So that would be my third question of him is to talk about that. Um, and my fourth question would be, can I have a cyber truck for free? Because I think they're pretty cool. That would be it. 
a bit of a waste of a fourth question. <laughs> yeah, I know, it is right. It is right, I'd say, yeah, well, you know. So is there any like bucket list things you wanted to do that you haven't yet? Um, yeah, there are a couple of things. Um, um, there's some countries I want to travel to, um, like the Maldives and some, you know, um, I'd like to spend a bit of time there. Um, you know, I've, I've always loved New York, so I want to go to New York. Uh, there's a couple of cities in America that I, I, I sort of dig, right? Um, so I, I like to go and do that. Middle East is part of that journey as well. Um, for whatever reason, I've never been hyper big on, um, I've never been hyper big on going to the UK. Don't know why. It's just one place I've never really been that fascinated with. Maybe it's because of the history of it I don't really sort of connect to, but. Um, so there's that. Um, I'd like to do a zero gravity flight. Um, that's one thing I'd like to do, um, is go on to Branson's um, uh, uh, sort of that uh, plane or whatever it is. Uh, yep. Yep. It's a virgin flight that does a zero gravity flight would be pretty awesome. Uh, so I want, I'm going to do that. I'm not, I'm not thinking about it. I will do that. Um, and I'd like to um, uh, live on the moon for a week and then come home. No, I'm joking. Wouldn't that be cool though? Um, yeah, I'm not very materialistic, so there's, um, there's you know, I'd, I'd rather, I'd be more happy with giving away $5 million worth of courses to people in need than fucking spending money to go on the bottom of it. That would be my take, yeah. All right, next question. So kind of in relation to that, what did you want to be when you were a kid? Like when you were little, did you think you'd be here? Um, well, I sort of wanted to be a rock star. <laughs> So I did, I really wanted to be, uh, and I didn't know, you don't know, right? When, I think when you grow up with music around you and you start playing instruments and writing songs, which I did, you, you just, it just, it, it's all encompassing, right? It just it overcomes you and you don't really think of anything else. So I wanted to be a, I wanted to be a musician uh, touring the world and super famous. That's what I wanted to do. Uh, that sort of didn't work out, so, um, um, so in that journey, well, we played a lot of, wrote a lot of songs, played a lot of gigs over the years. You know, I had a recording studio, uh, band rehearsal rooms, um, I used to book bands, manage bands, all that sort of stuff, you know, which is cool. You know, and then, and then you end up having a child and everything falls apart. Life just ends, no, I'm just joking. Um, and then you have to sort of grow up a little bit and then, and then go for it, right? But through that journey, I was always an entrepreneur. Like I was always sort of in charge a little bit. Like I own the rehearsal rooms, I own the recording studio, you know what I mean? So I managed to be able to be entrepreneurial through that journey um, and run my own businesses as a side hustle. Um, so I learned a lot, um, but I think you just get to a point where you know it's not going to work. So you have to make a decision, man. Like I know dudes who are chasing that dream now who are like super old with long hair and they look ridiculous. You know? <laughs> like it's true, like they're still chasing that. And I'm, which is cool, no harm, no foul. And if they're passionate about that and they're enjoying themselves, that's great. But uh, what if they were wrong, right? Where they should have made a decision that should, this is not gonna work out, maybe I should go do something else. Because I think you can enjoy other things. It's not, you know, and, but musicians are passionate and creatives, so I get it. But business, I think, is passionate and creative as well. So, um, I don't know if that answers your question, but um, that's how I see it, so yeah. I, I would. Uh, I didn't really always know I was going to be an entrepreneur, but then again, I did, right? Because I thought I was going to be a famous rock star. Um, God damn, that didn't happen. What would be anyway. your last name? I don't know. Is it your name? I don't know. Yeah, I'd probably change name. it. <laughs> I, I, I've always liked Lorenzo, right? So I'd probably change it to that. I don't know. And Motley Crue was the band I wanted to go play for. For whatever reason, I don't know. I just wanted to probably be Tommy Lee, right? So, um, yeah. anyway. Did you know what happened to the other guys that were in your band? Like, you stayed in touch with them? You know where they're yeah, at? Yeah, they all got addicted to drugs and committed suicide. That was a joke. They didn't do that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, uh, yeah, they're all around doing their stuff, right? I just think they're doing their stuff and... You know, I think they're family guys now and they have kids and, you know, they've got probably a good job, you know, um, and they're earning money and living their life the way they live their life, you know, and, and that's cool. Um, but that was never for me. 
about it. I could not do that. I could not have a nine to five job, work for someone else um, and have a Labrador and drive a station wagon. I, that does my head in. A, I don't like taking people telling me what to do uh, and I sort of need to be in control. So I'm a control freak. So that would never work for me. And I find living that life pretty boring. Absolutely, totally boring. Uh, Cause I want to take risks uh, and do some cool things, right? So, but that's what entrepreneurs do. Um, and by the way, and I said this to Zach, is that only 3% of the people will be able to do that and the rest of them will think they can, but they never will. Cause they don't have the courage or the, or the sustainability. Cause as soon as they get hit, they give up. They shake too much and it's too hard and it worries me and you know, and then they feel sorry for themselves and quit. People like me, we lose time and time again. Uh, like I'm sort of losing now a little bit, right? Uh, but I find it super fun because <laughs> I want to win and, and I will, and that's part of the game. I think business is a game, by the way, and I just want to win the game. Like, you know, the money's great and you know, all the luxuries that you get with that are great, you know, you know building the multi-million dollar homes and all that stuff is cool, but it's more fun winning the game. Like, cause I'm sort of losing at the moment, man. And it's so much fun. Um, cause I know exactly how to win. And I'm doing that now. Yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Look, we hope you enjoyed the episode as much as we enjoyed putting it together for you. If you like what you heard today and want to be part of our growing community, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribing not only gives you automatic updates for new episodes, but also access to other cool stuff. Soon to be released books, courses, and more. Your engagement truly makes a difference and we sincerely appreciate it.